I'm Lucas from King Gizzard. Hey, I'm Cook. I'm Joe. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm Michael. It's Ambrose. I'm Stu and we're at Amoeba. In Hollywood. And this is what's in my bag, baby. Got uh, Guided by Voices, Alien Lanes, Lo-Fi Masters. I used to cover a uh, game of pricks in a three-piece band of mine. There's like nearly 30 tracks on here, they're all really short, but just like like snippets of like pop. It's almost Gen like a mixtape. Genius, like I reckon, yeah. Lo-Fi rock. Yeah, and that's like, that's what their stuff is. It just sounds like they just came up with it and recorded it, and that's it. It's so unadorned. It's just something special about it. A lot of these songs. When you motor away, be on the watch for lips. When you free yourself from the chance of a lifetime. First one I picked was this Lee Hazelwood um, soundtrack, which as soon as I got off the rack, Ambi already bagged me out because he. He said I've already got it, and he said it sucks. No, I did say it sucks. <laughs> but yeah, I like a few of the songs on it. The, the title. The title track's sick. It's like a real sort of orchestral, like Lee Hazelwood, pretty epic. Yeah, it's a good record. Now he's got two. Yeah, now I've got two <laughs> copies. May your house be safe from tigers. May you always be my friend. I know the cool kid hipsters are into the African music at the moment, but I assure you I was there before <laughs> all of the hipsters. <laughs> this is a guy called Haley Mergia, who's Ethiopian, who like is, I guess, more famous for his kind of Afro soul funk kind of stuff. All instrumental, but all really dope. This is him like kind of mucking around with some moogs and some synths and some early drum machines in the early 80s, but really interesting. Ethiopian kind of scales are something that I find really bizarre, and there's some kind of X factor in it that is very, very good. I got a t-shirt because I stink like shit. My girlfriend actually introduced me to Yes. So it's good because she can, she can wear that too. This is an amazing record, Fragile, one of my favorites. So it was sort of like an easy choice. I listened to a lot of heavy metal, I guess, and then through that kind of got into bands like Tool and sort of progressive stuff like that. It all kind of like comes back to bands like Yes, I think, in, in a way. Even though they weren't hugely metal, they influenced a lot of that sort of stuff. Everything's all related, I think. Yeah, definitely. The Kinks, Arthur, really kooky kind of stuff. I guess I take a lot of influence from that. But yeah, another like 60s classic. Ray Davies is a genius, such a good songwriter. And there's a song on it, Australia. It's easy for us to relate to that song, yeah. Yeah, so. as an Australian, yeah. On a sunny Christmas day, Australia. This, Ultimate Spinach, it's like a, I don't know, 60s band that didn't last too long. I think it's only like one of two, maybe three records they put out. I only kind of really know it because of skateboarding videos. The first track, Gilded Lamp of the Cosmos, is awesome. And it's just got some sick artwork. And I've been wanting an Ultimate Spinach record for a while. That song specifically was used in like a foundation skate video about 10 years ago. Uh, section to like one of my favorite sort of styles. Kate Le Bon. I never really knew much about Kate Le Bon until we did a tour with uh, White Fence. Kate was playing guitar with Tim at White Fence. I think it was Tim told me that um, she had her own stuff as well, and like I did, I never knew. And um, and it's a great record. She's a really great guitarist and um, really lovely person as well. Uh, I've got bad, bad, not good. Listen to this a lot, and it's all instrumental. 
incredible uh, contemporary jazz. Really cool drumming. And they're real young as well. Yeah, they're like early 20s, they're just accomplished jazz players. Yeah, the keys play out just like doesn't stop. I just don't know how people choose those notes so quickly. Standells, good guys sometimes wear white. Don't wear white, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's just a sweet, like, nugget style, like, garage classic from the 60s, like mid 60s, I guess. Yeah, also another band that had a lot of influence when I was kind of younger. This is kind of like exactly like what our band we played in sounded like. Yeah, the one before you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we sort of pretended to try and be like when we were, when we were you Used know, to like 16, dress like 17. That as well. yeah. <laughs> it was like this fantasy we were kind of trying to live out. Eric actually found this, but I stole it off him because he doesn't know who the, the guy is. <laughs> um, um, but Herbie Mann, very cool, sleazy looking, kind of funk jazz flautist. He's got like heaps and heaps of records. I haven't like come close to listening to them all, but what I've heard is really, really good. I haven't heard this one, but it seems really interesting. <laughs> Motorhead. Overkill, classic, rest in peace Lem. Yeah, this is with Filthy Phil on the drums who sort of trademarked the double kick groove, which I've not yet mastered. I've always like wanted to be really good at it, but I can't do it. And yeah, I've sort of just been like listening to this heaps in the van on tour, trying to get that double kick down. <laughs> classic Bo Diddley album, which I don't have any Bo Diddley records. Yeah, it's got all the bangers on it. Yeah. It's like the perfect album to put on in the morning when you wake up. Thought I'd get one for my collection. I got this for some reason, because the track Fistful of Love I used to be obsessed with. This is like pretty dark, like lyrical content about Fistful of Love. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's just a good record, <laughs> like the cover, um, and amazing voice, obviously. And I feel your fears, and I know it's out of love. It's got a bit of a fresh cut of Exotica, Les Baxter, kind of 50s and 60s lounge shit, very cool. Each their song kind of like is a white man's interpretation of what it would be like living on like Hawaii or like a or somewhere in Africa or somewhere like in Asia. Anyway, it's really like dramatic and romantic but real cool. Well, I actually got a whole stack of books. I got Beowulf because it's kind of like a poetic classic, and I've never read it. This is 2001 Space Odyssey, the novel. Arthur C. Clarke wrote this, who potentially wrote the screenplay for the film. And the film, as like most people would know if they've ever seen it, it's kind of deliberately vague. And it's a beautiful film, it's an amazing film, but this is, I've heard, more in-depth and kind of like explains some parts of the story. So I've always wanted to read this. We got a collection of H.P. Lovecraft stories, because it's kind of gruesome and dark and I like that sort of thing. H.P. Lovecraft is one of my favourite authors and it's kind of good to have all of these bundled up together. So there's some sort of classics of his amongst this, this book. Philip K. Dick, because you can never have enough Philip K. Dick in your life. And I haven't read this one either, so that was kind of an easy choice. I also got this book. This is a collection of satanic stories or literature set chronologically sort of through time. And I don't believe in God, so I don't fear Satan. So, you know, you got your Alistair Crowley and your Edgar Allan Poe and your Mark Twain and your, your many others, so that seems like a fun one. And I got one more that Joey picked out for me. I know nothing about, but it's uh, called Lucas, which is my name. <laughs> name yeah. So, I don't know, yeah. 
<laughs> and it says, um, so that's me. <laughs> two bucks. You're losing money by not getting it. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what's in my bag. <laughs> That was fun.